Hey, Tapping in Life's Math and History, and we are going to take a look at composite functions on graphs. So what we're going to do is, we've been solving a lot of problems with composite functions, where usually they're a function inside a function. So literally, you have to solve the function inside it first, then solve the function outside the box. So, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be moving on to, huh? What's this? Yeah, it does look like a graph, but this doesn't seem like the normal kind of slope you might be thinking of. Well, turns out there be, tends to be more than just one slope. And right now, you might be panicking, but this is going to be so hard. But what are we going to do? So, what we have to do is find right here, just for the top one, these functions. But the crazy thing is, they require a lot more on uh, trying to get to a space rather than just calculating a bunch of numbers. Here's what we have to do. To understand what's going on and to understand, like, to understand, you know how we say find the function of something? Well, when you have something like this right there, we say we have to find the function of x. But also, if your problem has three things in it, then we're going to say the function of x of something, of the function of, let's say, three, for example. So what that is saying is, since we have that x, we tend to start with the x-axis. And what your function of f is going to be kind of like your y-axis. Sort of like the domain, the range, the independent, dependent variable. It's a good way to look at it. So let's see what happens right over here. So the first one, it says x of 1. So we start at 0, 0, as is what we usually start in an algebra class. And it says the function of 1. So since x is in the 1, or the 1 is in the x part of the f of x, we have to move 1. But we have two options. We could A, go to the F, or B, go to the G function. Well, in this case now, we have to go to the F, because that is saying that the function of F, so meaning that we would go right over here. So the function of 1 is going to be 1. See how easy that is? It's basically trying to catch a train. The function of 0. So if we have the letter F as 0, we go here, and since our nearest one is f, we go up to 1, right over there. Well, it does seem a little bit confusing until you understand and practice with it. The next one is the function of g, which is negative 3. So we start here at 0 and go 1, 2, 3 left spaces across the x-axis, because negative 3 was our x. But since we have a G instead of an F, we have to go to the G line, which means 1, 2, 3. Hey, it looks like it's 3 right here. So negative 3, positive 3. So we're going to put a positive 3 right over here. You wouldn't go to the F because it's not asking anything for the F. Now we have to find the G of 4. So we start here and go 1, 2, 3, 4. And the G line right over here is going to be 4, 0. So we're going to put 0 right over here. So the ones where it's just single functions is really, really easy. But uh-oh, the next one is a little bit more complicated. We have a double function, a function inside a function. Well, here's what we're going to do. So, you know how we usually start with the inside function first? And when we get to an answer, we find the function on the outside? Well, that's what we're going to do. So, we have the function of f, the function of g of negative 1. So, we start with g of the function of negative 1. So, f is going to be the same idea. So, negative 1 is going to be our x. So, here's negative 1. But the problem is we have to do the g a lot. So g is going to be down to negative 2. So, but we're not done yet. Because now we have the function of negative 2. 
So basically, what we're trying to do is get to a train station. But the problem is, the G line did not get us to our answer. Once we get to the G line at that station right there, we try to take with negative 2 and get to the S line, which is our destination. So another way to look at it. So now we have to find the function of F of negative 2. So we go 1, 2, but look, we go to 3 because we have 1, 2, and when we go to the G function, we go up to 3. So our answer right here, or our train station, our final destination, is number 3. And please mind the gap when you're, at, when you're entering or exiting the cab or the train car. Next one is the same thing. So we have F of G of negative 4. So the G of negative 4. So we have 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, and G is going to be 3. But we're not done yet. We still need to go to the F line. So we have the function of positive 3. So the function of positive 3, we go 1, 2, 3. And when you go to 3, it's going to be a weird decimal. But I'm going to say 2.5. If a teacher has this kind of graph where there's like no boxes, and you get close to a destination or an answer, even if you're off by a few decimals from the answer key, then the teacher will not grade it incorrect because 1, you're that close, and 2, you know and show and explain how you demonstrated how you got to that answer and how you got to that destination. So what we're going to do is say it's going to be equal to 2.5. Answers may vary because this graph doesn't seem to have any boxes. The last one is going to be g of f of 0. And what the crazy thing about that is, is we start with the f line because it's inside of the g line as functions. So the function of 0 of f, 0, 1. So when we go from 0, which is Grand Central Station, go to number 1. So station number 1 for the f line will, is going to be 1. So the f of 0 is going to equal to 1. So 1 is our station. But we need to transfer to another train. So the g of 1, what will that bring us? So we start at Grand Central Station once again. But we go to g 1. But instead of going up because that's the f line, we have to go down to negative 2, which is the g line. So what we have to do is our final answer is negative 2. And that's our final destination. Please watch your gap. Please mind the step and please watch the gap. <laughs> so I hope this video has helped you understand this crazy graph, whatever it's called. And it's literally called comp composite functions on a graph. Thank you for watching Top Life's Math Industry. Like and subscribe.